around you and me, the worlds of media, science and economy are resounding with the prefix nano. All I hear is references to this invisible scale, a billionth of a meter, just a few atoms wide. The frenzy is global. Thanks to nanos, science and technology foresee a fascinating new world, infinite new research fields and miraculous new possibilities. From materials to energy, the environment to medicine, via electronics and agriculture, nanos should make everything more efficient, more resistant, cheaper and less polluting. Nothing in our world will be free from nanos, a prospect that sometimes appears quite alarming. Welcome to the nano world, to the nano worlds. Welcome aboard for a journey to meet the initiators, the pioneers who opened the doors to the infinitely small. Okay, um, the uh, meter, yeah. about this, yeah. and then, then uh, one thousandth of a meter is yeah. one, one millimeter, yeah. okay? Then the one thousandth of one millimeter is one micron, mm -hmm. one micron. Mm -hmm. then, uh, th then the one thousandth of one micron, micron is the one nanometer. Welcome to Nano World. Nano. Did you say nano? Being a novice, despite hearing the term left, right and center, I'm a little bewildered. It's time to look a little closer. Very, very close in fact. Firstly, because nanos represent a scale of 10 to the minus 9 meters, a billionth of a meter just a few atoms wide. A nanometer is four silicon atoms side by side. On that scale, a speck of dust is as big as a planet. Between the macro world, our world, and the nano world, from the Greek meaning very small, there is the same relation as between the thickness of a finger and the diameter of planet Earth. During the 20th century, the quest for the infinitely small inspired many scientists and revolutionized our world from computers and nuclear physics to biology and the search for new materials. Today, a new adventure is underway, featuring nanoscience and nanotechnology, which include a wide range of disciplines all seeking to study and exploit the potential of nanometric matter. On this minuscule scale, will we be able to penetrate the secrets of the natural world and of matter itself, to realize perhaps the same feats as flies and walk on the ceiling, or to see our limbs regrow like the tail on a lizard, to make surfaces where everything slides like on a lotus leaf, or manufacture batteries as thin as a sheet of paper, yet as powerful as a nuclear power station, cables stretching from Earth to the moon, and molecular computers? To find answers to these questions, I first of all head for Japan to the Nagano province to attend a lecture given by the British scientist Sir Harold Croto, a nano world pioneer and one of the best known popularizers. Here like everywhere else, he's given a star's welcome and for openers he gives me his vision of nanotechnology. Nanotechnology has many definitions and the one I mentioned was that I like and prefer um, is atom by atom, molecule by molecule assembly um, to create a, a complex structure. How does Harold, the chemist, get mixed up in this story? As a professor of the University of Sussex in the United Kingdom, he is intrigued by the long chains of carbon thrown out into space by dying stars. On planet Earth, we know the purest forms of this same carbon as diamonds, for rings, and graphite for pencils. But in space, the carbon atoms appear to come together to form rather different structures. In order to understand them, Harold decides to reproduce in a laboratory the conditions in which this stellar dust is created. In 1984 in Houston, Texas, he joins up with Bob Curl and Richard Smalley, who dispose of the latest equipment and a highly qualified team. I went to Rice University to do the experiment and within about three days of doing the experiment we came up with um, an incredibly exciting result. We came up with this fantastically strong signal which indicated that you could put 60 carbon atoms together to make a very stable structure which was a big surprise. We thought that maybe somehow a round object could, could, could explain this. So suddenly, 
from an assumption that all the carbon people uh, had that graphite wants to be flat, suddenly we realized that on a small scale, and by small I mean 60, 100, 1,000, and maybe 10,000 atoms, it actually doesn't want to be flat, it wants to be closed. We were just ecstatic. The results are beyond all expectations. 60 carbon atoms come together to form an object that according to the calculations could only be spherical, round like a football. This is C60, the first member of a new family of carbon molecules called fullerene by Croto himself after the visionary architect Buckminster Fuller who built a dome with a premonitory silhouette for the 1967 World Fair in Montreal. Hi, how are you? How are you? How much have? <laughs> Through the discovery of this new molecule in showing how it can form itself from carbon atoms and in studying the specific characteristics and properties linked to its size, scientists are, objectively speaking, working for the first time in the nanoscience and technology field. And that's how Croto and his fullerene kickstart the nano world.